Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and in this series we are following me scratch building a large, low-relief Victorian hotel for behind Chandwell Station. In the last episode, I showed how I made this end building and its L-shaped hipped roof. I spent a few hours adding details to this part of the building, such as gutters, downspouts, chimney details, and these dormer windows. So let's dive straight into episode 6, Detail and Dormers. If you're enjoying this series, please click the thumbs up button below the video. This encourages me to keep making these videos and it helps others find them on YouTube too. I've so far added around 40 windows to the hotel with many, many more to come. My friend Tim suggested that although I'm not adding interior detail, it would still make sense to show curtains. And I agreed that they would add a lovely sense of depth as long as they looked 3D enough. I didn't want curtains glued directly to the back of the glazing. To that end, I glued small strips of 1mm card to each side of the window. I cut small pieces of Scale Scenes grey net curtain just to give some shading and I glued these onto the strips. I varied the gap between the curtains and I made some look like they were held back, others I made look closed. My initial impressions were that this 1mm gap really made a difference. The camera doesn't pick it up so well, but the 3D effect is subtle and mesmerising especially when the window frames cast a shadow on the curtains. I finished the effect off by making sure that no light can get in to show the empty interior of the model. I paint strips of card with matte black paint and then mount this over the gaps in the curtains. The effect is wonderful, so thank you Tim for suggesting this. I only wish I'd done it on the windows I did a few weeks ago, but these are now inaccessible. Using my steel rule as a guide, I run my PVA applicator in a straight line right down the wall. This makes the glue itself the guideline for where the downspout needs to go. I colour a straight cut edge of Weetabix box on both sides and down the edge with a black sharpie. I then cut off a sliver as thin as I can make it. This is about 1mm I think. Use my tweezers and then place it onto the line of glue. I nudge the downspout against my steel rule while the glue is still slippery. The result, whilst not perfect, really does look like a downspout and then it even bends perfectly around the stone relief at the top of the wall. I used a combination of PVA glue, magnetic right angle clamps, engineer's squares and a cup of tea to fix the two parts of the building together. The building nestles at right angles within the layout's curved back scene. This makes it impossible to join the roofs properly as the back scene gets in the way. I've cut the new roof as close as I can by hand to fit against the curve. I can extend the ultra low relief part a bit further but it still won't join up. I think I'll leave it like this, although I contemplated curving the roof to follow the sky. I used strips of Weetabix packet cut to the same dimensions as I used on the main station building. The windows don't line up perfectly, but I hoped that once the strips were added that you'd not be able to tell so much. I added the strips with the building in situ so that I could get them lined up properly. This is the same technique as adding the downspouts. It seems to have worked out okay, despite a slight discoloration that I think is caused by the four layers of varnish that the station has and the hotel has yet to receive. I used rectangles of Weetabix packet covered in stone texture as little caps on the chimney shoulders. I used more rectangles of Weetabix packet for the top of the chimney stack. This is a simple case of gluing the card to the texture and then wrapping it around the edges and trimming it. I used 1mm wide strips of the same texture with the edges coloured in pen as a detail part way up the stack. I topped this off with chimney pots which are just made from a cotton bud cut into pieces. When I took the components for the dormer windows out of the printer, I thought I may struggle. They were tiny. I stuck them to Weetabix box and started to cut them out. I glued the triangular sides to a flat piece that will support the roof. I added a small sliver in the middle to try and keep them square. The window surround is just 0.8mm wide, so to avoid bending it, I cut the hole for the window first. I painted the exposed brown card edge with some white paint. The roof supports are only 3mm high, but the beauty of Weetabix packet over all other cereals is that it is thin and tough, and importantly, it does not delaminate at these tiny sizes. I very carefully glued two tiny triangles to the flat roof of each dormer. I made a couple of window frames using the sticky label technique that I've demonstrated before. I glued the window into place before cutting the whole thing out. The horizontal piece of frame here is just a quarter of a millimetre wide. The resulting component was rigid neat and surprisingly sturdy, despite the incredibly thin surrounds. These fit on top of the main piece just right. 
I didn't want Weetabix yellow to be shining out of my dormers, so I painted the interiors black. I stuck a piece of the curtain texture to a spare bit of card, and then cut this into tiny squares, which I glued inside the dormer a millimetre or so behind where the window will be. This will represent a half closed blind and should hopefully add some depth to the window. I wasn't sure what to do with the sides of the dormers. I've seen photographs of Victorian dormers that are tiled vertically, so I just added tiles the same as the hotel roof. I didn't want the blue grey of the tiles to be visible inside the room, so I marked the dormer's position with a sharpie and then painted the tiles black. I glued the dormers into place and aligned them by eye in a position that looked about right. I coloured the edges of the roof with a pen. Once I'd done this, I fumbled my camera and recorded 15 minutes of the handle of my cup of tea instead of me adding the roof and tiling it. But suffice to say, it worked out okay. I tidied up the front with white paint. The edge of the tiling is not too neat and the roof is one millimetre too short as I didn't add length to cover the front piece, but I think it's worked out okay. For now, at normal viewing angles, these two look great and I'm really pleased that I challenged myself to make them. These details have taken me seven hours to do, taking the overall build effort to 72 and three quarter hours. I had a box of cotton buds lying around, so I'm counting the one I made the chimney pots from as being free. That said, I used one sheet of photo paper and one scalpel blade this week, at a cost of about 19 pence. This has taken the overall cost of the hotel to £5.25. I'm moving on to another big part of the hotel next, so keep an eye out for that. If you missed any of the other parts of this build, there's a link to the playlist here, and here's my no maths hipped roofs technique, so check that out if you're interested. But for this part, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.